Hello, everybody. Thank you all for being here today, for coming together on this really special day, International Women's Day. It is a pleasure to be here and to know that you've all taken a moment to decide to spend an hour with us. We're going to honor this day. We're going to talk about this day. We're going to talk about how this day is not only an important day of its own, but one that we should be using to harness the things that we can do to elevate and support women throughout the year long. So I'm really glad to have you all joining. If you don't know me, my name is Beth Santos. I am founder and CEO of Wonderful, which is an international collective of thousands of travelers and travel content creators. We have this mission of connecting and supporting women all around the world. We started as a travel blog in 2009. Now we have chapters worldwide where women can connect face to face. We have an online membership community where you can actually get tips and advice on your next trip or meet up with somebody in your next destination. And we have a huge creator network. We run an event called Wits, which is one of our leading content creator events. We bring together hundreds of really incredible, thoughtful content creators from all around the world to talk about issues in travel marketing, how we can use our voices to make travel a better place for all of us. And we do that every year. This year, we're going to be in Puerto Rico in May, and we cannot wait to see so many of our friends again. Um, and what I wanted to do was actually bring a sampling of our speakers into this virtual stage to have a conversation with them about what they see ahead, you know, what's been going on, how we've been supporting women, how much we have left to do, how we can really support each other. If you are an ally watching, we're going to talk about allyship. We're going to talk about how you can help really elevate other women around you, not just this day, not just during Women's History Month, but all year long. So I see comments coming in and I love it. And what I want you all to do, if you haven't seen me present before, you'll know that I love including the audience into this. So I want you all to take a minute and go into the comments and write who you are and where you are around the world. I want to see where everyone's tuning in from. So I see Cookie here in Australia. Cookie, that's not, is it your name? No, just the Cookie Van. The Cookie Van in Australia is here. Jennifer is here. Happy International Women's Day. Tilia is here. Uh, Margie is here. Let's see. Mary is ready to go. Susan's in Arlington, Virginia. Oh my gosh, this is always wild. San Diego is represented. Melbourne. So we've got like a couple Australians. I love this. This is what happens when we're a little bit later in the day US time. We end up being a little bit um, more accessible in the, on the Pacific side of the house. Aaron's in Milwaukee. We have, oh, Tilly's in London. Perfect. Asia's in LA. Melena's in Los Angeles. Um, oh, I know we have, oh, Rachel's in LA. Hi, Rachel. We have another Rachel here in Toronto too. Brazil is represented. Miami Beach is here. Karen is in New York. Melissa's in Honolulu. I love this. I love how many people we're getting on West Coast, Asia Pacific, Australia. It's so fantastic. Keep on putting in. We'd love to see who you are, where you're coming in from. Lima, Peru is in the house. Cyprus is in the house. Happy International Women's Day, everyone. I mean, truly, it is such a special day. Israel, oh, this is, gosh, this is such a good international group. We're going to have a lot of fun. We'll keep letting those comments go through and show up on the screen. Rebecca, I know you got me on that one. And let's go ahead and start introducing our panel because I want to make sure that we get a good chunk of time for you to meet everyone who's here and for you to get a chance to talk with them and hear what they're all about. So I'm going to introduce them one at a time and um, and then we'll be able to do this. I'm going to take the slide off. Actually, uh, yeah, I'll take the slide off the screen for a second and let's see who we've got. So first of all, I'm going to bring in Jen Ruiz. She's a lawyer turned full-time travel blogger and author. She's a two-time North American Travel Journalist Association award winner. She has 
a monstrous social media following. She has over 230,000 social media followers. She has exploded on TikTok. She's been featured in the Washington Post, Forbes, ABC News. She's been working with all sorts of brands like Discover Durham, Samsonite, Airbnb, Visit Jordan, Visit Montana. She's a five-time Amazon best-selling author, a three-time TEDx speaker, and member of the Point Sky Travel Advisory Panel, and friend of mine, Jen Ruiz. Welcome to the virtual stage here. Woo! Thanks for having me, Beth. I feel like we should all be, yeah, we should like have some champagne and be like, woo woo, happy International Women's Day. <laughs> yeah, celebration for dancing. I totally agree. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's bring in your co-panelists, shall we? So next we have Samto Ugweze. Samto is an award-winning travel blogger, speaker, and entrepreneur. She's on a mission to help adventurous women live an extraordinary life of travel, freedom, and purpose by discovering the path to create a location-independent lifestyle. Her content explores topics such as solo female travel, traveling while Black, moving abroad, working from anywhere. She's the founder of two blogs because clearly we don't have enough to do. Somto Seeks and Grow with Somto. They focus on solo female travel and entrepreneurship respectively. And through her work, Somto hopes to equip women with the mindset, tools, and resources to not only navigate the world with confidence, but also achieve time, location, and financial freedom. Samto, welcome to the stage. We're going to do a little dance every time. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> happy day, happy day. We're so glad to have you here. Thank you. Happy to be here. Now we have one more person to bring in. So I'm going to read a little bit about her too and do some bragging points. It's Yulia Denisiuk. Yulia is an award-winning travel photographer and writer who's turned to travel journalism after working as a U.S. Navy sailor and Fortune 500 brand manager. Now her work appears in National Geographic Traveler, Time, Condé Nast Traveler, BBC Travel, and more. For past assignments, she shared a roof with nomads in Mongolia. She's traced the origins of Iznik tiles with artisans in Turkey and learned the art of Imigongo with artists in Rwanda. She's the founder of Nomad and Jewels, a small group travel company with trips to the Middle East. And she also runs Travel Media Lab, which is a platform for women in travel media. And she is currently located in the Arctic Circle. You can literally see, well, those, ah! <laughs> Hi, friends. Hi, Beth. Hi, Jen. Samso. Hi, everyone. So happy to be here in the warm uh, in that I'm staying at. Outside is extremely cold right now. I'm in the Canadian Arctic uh, region for an assignment, but I'm so happy to be with you for the next hour and talk all things women in travel. Oh, we're just what a fun day. I mean, I have you all like how many of you I'm really curious about this. Did you grow up celebrating International Women's Day? Did you know about it? When did you just start celebrating it? Like who's show of hands? Who has like known about International Women's Day your whole life and like celebrated it? Okay, Yulia. So tell us more. Like, how did you know about this day? Well, it's it's quite interesting actually, guys, because the International Women's Day, I come from the background of Soviet Union and in the Soviet Union, this day has evolved from its origins, which I think we all know the origins of the day uh, by now, which is, you know, protests and, and, and advocating for women's rights. But in the Soviet Union, this day has actually evolved into complete opposite. On, uh, on March 8th, all around the Soviet Union, when I was growing up, uh, women were giving flowers, presents, mm -hmm. and it was all about femininity and, and being this sort of, you know, uh, a girly girl, let's say. So that background of uh, fighting for women's rights has completely disappeared from the holiday in the Soviet Union. It, it was, it, and it was really a day to celebrate femininity and the, the, the weaker sex, which is what we were called mm. in the Soviet mm. Union. Yeah. So, but that's how I grew up with that. Well, you know, and it's interesting because you're right. Like there's, there's kind of something here to be said, like, you know, when, so I'll give you an example like when I was a kid and we would have, you know, Mother's Day and Father's Day and I would be like, well, why don't we have Kids Day? And then my parents would be like, because Kids Day is every day. 
And it's like, it's kind of like that with International Women's Day. It's like, why do we only have one Women's Day? Why don't we have Men's Day? Because like men have every day. <laughs> but like, to your point, you know, there was, it might have, I actually, I don't know. I'm just kind of spewing. I don't know, like the origins of International Women's Day. But I think you raise a really good point, which is at some point somebody said like, we need, you know, like women are other, they're like separate. And so because of that, they need this day. And, and so there's like good and bad things about it. You know, on the one hand, like every day should be women's day. On the other hand, it's not that way yet. So we do need to have these days, I think. Um, but I love, I love the flowers. We got, when I lived in Portugal, I also got a flower and I was like, what is this? It's like a flower. This is so delightful. You know, we don't do that in the U.S. Jen and Samto, have you always celebrated International Women's Day? No, I actually just found out about it in like 2020 um, on social media well, <laughs> of all places. Well, yeah, I guess it was just as the pandemic was like. Yeah, just as the pandemic was, was, was starting and I saw it like trending on social media and I, I was like, what is International Women's Day? And I Googled it and that's really how I found out about it. And then since then, I've been celebrating it because I think it's it's so important to highlight like just the incredible contribution that women make, not just in travel, but in all areas of life. And um, ever since I found out about it and did some more research on it, I've just been like posting about it like nonstop every single March 8th. And um, it's something that I, I, I have on my calendar now. So I definitely think it's, it, I, I like the fact that we have this designated day just to celebrate women. And I, I think mm -hmm. I, I'm just really happy that we're having this conversation even to begin with. And I think there are a lot of women in your shoes I'm seeing in the comments and people saying like, Milena says, I didn't even know it was a thing until 2019 when I was called to do an event celebrating it, which is awesome. You know, Erin said she didn't know about International Women's Day until a few years ago. So I think it's still, I mean, a lot of us, you know, the four of us work in, in the space of supporting and empowering women. I'm sure there's so many women out there that also still have no idea that this day even exists. Jen, how about yourself? Yeah, definitely. I did not know about it growing up. I don't feel like anywhere in elementary school, we were like, oh, it's Women's Day now. Um, <laughs> we're going to, you know, okay. I don't think that that was really a thing, um, but I think it became a thing later on somewhere along the way. And I don't remember exactly where or what year, but I know that I started to recognize March as kind of women's month overall. And that when I started to go places and I was traveling, I would always make a mental note like, oh, this would be a great place to pitch for Women's History Month, or this would be a great business to highlight. Um, and so I, I think I've seen like, for instance, I went to a bed and breakfast that I just came across in my kind of like as featured in an iPhone lately, um, that was all the rooms were named after famous Abigail's history which I thought was just so cute. Like there are so many different Abigails and it has different like pictures of them and touches of them. And um, it's run by a really wonderful couple and they cook, you know, the food for you every morning and they have board games and fresh flowers, you know, just talking about that. So it was a really, um, there's so many beautiful places. And I think places that are run by women that highlight women. I was also thinking of um, on a previous travel conference tour where we went to, um, the Belva Lockwood house. And we learned like, you know, that Belva Lockwood was this really important lawyer who um, argued before the Supreme Court, I believe, and wanted to run for president and all these different things. And so I think as we travel, we see so much more of it now that we're attuned to it. And that's the beautiful part of traveling is that you can experience these things firsthand. You know, I just came back from the Susan B. Anthony house in upstate New York in Rochester. Cool. Yeah. Really, it is cool to see, you know, the living history because it's so easy to think that, you know, it's this is just the way it is and take it for granted and, and really forget how much went into all the freedoms that we experience today. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think, you know, a lot of that comes down to tracking history and the fact that, you know, you go into the books and women are just not in the history book, somebody, was it, um, it was Joanna Haugen actually, who wrote an article. She writes uh, under Rooted Storytelling. And she had said, and this is the first place that I had come across it, that it's like 3% of statues around the world are of women. 3% of all statues 
are are women. And so, I mean, like women are just not in, we're just left out of history. And sometimes you falsely think, oh, we just haven't, you know, had many historic accomplishments perhaps, but no, that is definitely not true. <laughs> it's just that it hasn't been written. And so I think it's a little bit harder to find, but you're right. It's like that much more special and that much more important to look for it and to find it. Well, I just came back from Egypt where they purposely ruin, you know, Queen Hatshepsut's temple. It's always a tongue twister for me, but she was the only queen, the only woman to rule as a pharaoh, and they actively tried to destroy all of her statues of her, all of the sphinx of her, like everything of her that she built so that it would destroy her legacy. And so it is really interesting to see how we erase women from history and make an effort you know this woman ruled or she did so peacefully everybody was really happy she built these amazing monuments and they still try to just somehow blur her out um and so it's really wow. it's really interesting that's always been the case wow that's amazing and everyone listening in the comments i want to hear a couple of you have shared but i'm really curious if you have celebrated international women's day before and how you have celebrated. So what are you all, you know, Yulia, Jen, Santo, now you are all aware of International Women's Day, whether it has been throughout your life or in the past couple of years. Do you do anything different now? Do you like try to celebrate or honor it anyway? What do you do? What do you do today? Just take yourself out or do you just work? <laughs> Well, that's a really good question. I mean, I don't have like a particular way that I celebrate it. I just make sure that I acknowledge it um, with like a post on social media. Like in the past, I've like acknowledged um, like other solo female travelers in the industry, like black female travelers. So I do something to kind of like acknowledge women who are doing great work in this space and acknowledge like the mothers, the aunts, the sisters, like just celebrate women, um, even if it's just through like an email or a post. Um, but in terms of like going out and like, are you going to like a bar or something? Like nothing like that. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I think maybe in the future, like I, I could see myself doing something bigger around International Women's Day, maybe like some kind of tour or like a trip for International Women's Day. Like you just gave me an idea, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> this is what this is all about. F each one yeah. of us, because we're not busy enough, we're gonna walk away from this conversation with a new business idea that we're gonna <laughs> execute in the next year. Next year, we'll all come back and talk about what that was. <laughs> yeah, no, good. but I think that's that's a great way of of sharing that with others, right? Like in just, acknowledging the day, not just for yourself, but giving others an opportunity to really know about it and to celebrate it. So that's great. Jen, Yulia, what do you do on, on March 8th these days? Anything, anything special? Well, I do always make sure that my mom does get flowers because, you know, we did grow up with this holiday. Aww. Yes, yes, we grew up with the holiday. So my mom and my grandma both get flowers on this day, you know, and and it's, it's, it is a special day in our culture. Um, but I've also been sharing it on social. You know, I, I usually do a post where I sort of highlight it and shout out the amazing, amazing women that inspire me. I'm so fortunate to know so many of them even here today right in, um, in our panel I am just always so inspired by powerful strong beautiful women who lead from the heart and who don't need to lead by establishing their power like that you know sort of machismo way to lead which seems to be sort of prevalent around the world women lead differently we we are equally strong and powerful but we lead from the heart and and we lead in a much more nurturing way i feel like and i'm just so empowered by that now i'll just tell you a real quick story i just came back from sierra leone um which was an amazing trip by the way everybody should check out Sierra Leone it's an amazing country and in there we met so many badass powerful beautiful women queens really who showed up and weren't afraid to take up space and to be seen but again also be doing that in a very nurturing and kind and amazing way and I just love that I, I just geek out on that energy of women you know so I don't know why I'm I don't know where I was going with that thought, but that's kind of you know, <laughs> what I do, I guess, on International Women's Day. 
But, you know, I think you're, you're raising a really interesting point that maybe you don't even realize you're raising, which is like, there is this whole talk about, um, it's called feminist leadership. I think it's called feminist leadership. Like that's the official name of it. And it is, it's like leadership through collaboration, through, you know, kind of like democratic decision-making process through like a more empathetic style. And we can argue about like the gender binary and if that's like women or not or whatever, but like it goes to show the point is that there's more leadership styles out there than just, you know, I know everything and everyone's going to listen to me. And I think the things that make it out into the world are like the ones that are the most, you know, interesting and polarizing, right? Like the, the man who's just like, I know everything and, you know, I'm always right. Like that's the stuff that just like makes it into the news. But the people who are really succeeding are the ones who are able to bring a team around them. And that is considered like a feminist leadership style. And I think to your point, like this day can also be about recognizing the diversity of leadership styles, of, you know, personality traits, of like looking at, you know, ways to do things that are not sort of the, the mainstream and celebrating them for what they are and not trying to force people into a hole that they don't fit into. And also knowing when to when to step back. You know, we just we just got a masterclass in that from Jacinda uh Ardent, right? The the Prime Minister of New Zealand. She she did that. I don't know, I, I cannot imagine any sort of other leader in the world right now saying, you know what, I'm going to step back. I've I've had my time and now I'm gonna go. It's like it's just incredible example of, of that leadership. Yeah, no, who does that? <laughs> exactly. It's true. I mean, especially here, thinking about here in the States, I mean, that's just like unthinkable for somebody to not want. And um, I don't know if you've, have any of you read Think Again? This is like the book I'm reading right now. And so I think about it all the time. It's written by Adam Grant. So it is a man we're talking about on this call. But it's interesting because he goes through this, this concept of rethinking. And he's like the most powerful decision makers the most powerful people are ones who are not afraid of rethinking themselves. And he's like, we're in a, a time in society when things change so fast. He's like medical developments that used to take 50 years to develop now take three years. And he was like, the people who are going to succeed in this world now are the people who are going to be able to question themselves as frequently as possible because the world is changing at that same speed. And you cannot st stick with the same opinion and believe that that is going to be like what it is all the time yeah. because we are in this evolving society. It's like a really interesting way because I think sometimes to the point of like strong leadership, sometimes we think like people who second guess themselves are kind of weak people. But I think there's so much power in like second guessing yourself because it means that you've really taken the time to to weigh all of the different options in front of you. And like, that's a very, it doesn't just like leaders don't often say like, okay, my time is over. Like somebody else needs to be here. It's not considered a very strong thing to say, you know what? I think I was wrong then. And you know, now I'm adjusting this now. Usually we're like, oh, they're a flip flopper, you know? Oh, they don't know what they're talking about. But like, it takes a lot of strength to know that you were wrong in the past and to fix that, you know? so. So to like uncommon leadership traits that are actually really important, I submit that to you all. <laughs> Absolutely. So what do we do about this day? I mean, we, you know, I think it's such a fun day to celebrate and to honor. I got some flowers today too. I'm going to bring them in here. I got some international ones. Oh, I lovely. I got them. It's actually for... Um, my podcast just came out and my producer sent me flowers and I was like, you got the job, girl. Like, <laughs> one, that is the best business move ever, Bethany. I am like indebted to her for life now. It's like flowers. <laughs> and um, and so, so, yeah, so we have this day that we're celebrating, but I think a really important part of all of this is not just having International Women's Day or Women's History Month come and go, but talking about how we can actually leverage this day to serve as a reminder of the things that we still have yet to do. So all of you work in travel. You're all in a space of, to some degree, supporting, lifting, empowering women. Like, 
how further do we still have to go? Is is travel truly equitable for women yet? No. <laughs> Yulia, why not? Well, I mean, <laughs> why not? That's a good question, right? No, I <laughs> Aren't we 85% of travel making decisions? Why must we want so much more? <laughs> oh my God. I love this. Well, it's it's structural, right? It's all structural. Where are the people in power throughout different industries? And or who are the people in power throughout different industries? It's very often not women, you know. And I I see that so much on, on our travel. As Jen, you mentioned, you know, when, when you travel, you see you seek out all, all the different places that you could potentially have stories about, you know, uh, women and such. And when I travel and I interact with tourism boards, tour operators, hotels, businesses, more often than not, key decision makers are not women in so many countries around the world. And until that changes, not much is going to change, uh, I'm, I'm afraid, in this industry, but not only this industry, but throughout different industries in the world, right? That's why I think it's so important to raise strong women who are going to see that model of strong, amazing uh, female leadership in, uh, in front of them and who will want to do that as well. Because I, th I believe that until that changes, we, we, we're going to have more work to do uh, for years and years to come, unfortunately. Jen, what do you think? Is everything equal? Yeah, I don't know why I keep going back to an image that I have because I was just in New York City um, and I was riding the train because Ubers were like $40 to get anywhere. And so for every activity, I was like, do I want to add an extra $80 to this to go, go round trip? No. OK, let me try the train. So I got into the train and I remember seeing this girl who sat down in this empty space. Um, that was available. It was like a little space and she like sat down and immediately condensed herself when she sat to like fit into the space. And then meanwhile, I'm just like comparing and contrasting her with the guy that's next to me that when he sits down next to like the very tiny space next to me, he immediately expands himself to fill up as much of the space as possible. And it feels like no qualms about it. And so, and I've just, I remember thinking to myself like, man, what it must be like to be this guy and to just so boldly go places and just be like, I'm here, I'm taking up all the space, I've arrived, I feel no type of way about it. I'm gonna move and, you know, check all my pockets, do all the things. And this little girl who's just sitting there very calmly, you know, kind of keeping all our things together, wanting to be safe. And that I still think like in that moment really showed the differences in travel for men and women uh, and, and still what women have to go through in trying to minimize ourselves so that we don't gain, you know, any unwanted attention in trying to always be worried about our surroundings, our safety, our belongings, um, in trying to know, you know, how we can best go about the world without stepping on too many toes along the process. Uh, and so I think that that's still something that we always carry with us. And it's so wonderful that we're now at a stage where being a solo female traveler is the norm. It's something that people talk about. It's okay to see women traveling unaccompanied places. And I love that we have communities like this where we can share resources and empower each other and, you know, help each other in times of crises and have, you know, people on the ground that you can connect with. I think that's a wonderful thing. But I do think that we're still a ways away from being equal because the world itself and, and how we have to manage our way through it isn't equal. Mm. I love that visual that you shared, which like, I mean, you like, we can all see it, right? Like you go, they go into the theater and you're like, so I'm just gonna, you know, and, but also I feel like there's this, this way that we have as travelers that is similar to the way you've described this like taking up of space. And, and I wonder, you've got me thinking about so many things, including how much space should we take up when we travel? You know, like when we go, what is the, what is the line between confidently traveling to a place and taking ownership of yourself and taking ownership? And then also like respecting that you're in somebody else's country 
and not taking up space? And like, how much of both sides should we be incorporating into this? What do you like? You're you're the solo female traveler. Ex well, you all are really, Jen. But like, do you think about that at all? Like, maybe the men need to be doing more of the like taking less space up thing. Uh, do I think about my role when I go into a new place? Absolutely. Uh, especially when I'm going on my own, especially when I'm going as a storyteller, especially when I'm going aware that I want to, you know, respect the culture, the customs, especially when I'm fearful of going somewhere new because it's someplace I haven't been before. So I don't know what to expect. And even as a seasoned traveler, I still get nervous. Um, am I going to be able to get in and out of this country freely without any issues, you know, um, are sometimes things that still cross my mind. Uh, and so I think it's definitely, I, I try to take on the role of observer uh, it, as a default. So I try to go somewhere and just uh, just watch and see what's happening and, and try to take in as much as I can ask questions because the people love to tell their stories and then if i'm asked to participate then i'm all game i love participating i love doing fun things while traveling i love you know getting in there getting my hands dirty experimenting doing things um but i think by default i start by listening and asking questions uh, and allowing people to share with me what they want to share because i find that when i do that there's a lot of amazing stories that come out and people actually tend to go above and beyond on, not just because I'm a travel writer, um, but also because I think most people sense your energy of being curious. And I think they want you to leave with a good impression of their country. Nobody wants you to leave their country and be like, well, that sucked. I'm never going back again. <laughs> never recommending this. To like people want you to have a good time. Have you ever actually been bummed out traveling somewhere? I think that's why it's so fun for solo female travelers. Like people will find you and they'll be like, oh, what's wrong? What's happening? What do you need? Like, why are you not smiling? Like people want want you to be enjoying your time when you're visiting them. And it can be done in a way where it is safe, where you're learning things, where you're connecting with uh, locals, where you're experiencing the culture in a whole different way. Uh, and I think that all that starts with an attitude of curiosity. I love that. I kind of want to expand on what um, Jen was saying about how women feel like the need to shrink themselves. Um, and I think it's just like the, the gender roles that we're, we're, we're you know, raised with um and from the perspective of like being a travel content creator and also i mean i've worked with over 500 content creators um in the travel industry like over the past like three years like mentoring them and i always find that the people who have the most imposter syndrome the people who have the most fear around pitching themselves to brand or posting a certain article like are always women like we oh we have this insecurity like what if people don't like it like this need to please and um, make sure we're accepted. Whereas the men are like, oh, I have this idea and I'm running with it. Like I'm gonna pitch all the brands, like it's go, 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 right? So there, I, I feel like a part of it is just um, in the way that we're, we're raised to be like the nice girl who doesn't rock the boat, who doesn't upset men. And we want to um, we, we want to be liked, we want to to fit in. And I, I don't feel like it's, it's, as, it's as big of a deal for men as it is for women. Um, and I think that that psychology plays into it as well. So it's I think it, in terms of making travel more equitable for women, it's it's about you know allowing women, women to gain you know positions of power in the industry, but also the the psychological and the internal work to allow us to actually feel worthy to step into these mm -hmm. spaces and own our worth and not feel like we need to please people all the time. That's also a part of the issue as well. I love that so much, Somto. That's a lot of the work that I'm doing too with the, with the women in, in my community. And, you know, there's one stat that I uh, often uh, um, share that just boggles my mind. Uh, it's about imposter syndrome research, which says that men on average feel like they need to be two thirds of the way qualified to apply for the job. And for women, you need to be 133% qualified, which means over over overqualified to apply for that same job right we don't take as many risks we don't put ourselves out there as much because of the way we've been socialized you're absolutely right it's is the way we've been raised right and so having these conversations uh, and doing a lot of that internal work with 
within a community, within a safe space is super important because I can't tell you how many women I come across who are like, who have all these dreams, who have all these aspirations to do something, but they don't take that final step of actually putting themselves out there or pitching that brand or approaching somebody because of all these challenges and because of imposter syndrome. So super important work that we all need to be doing. Uh, couldn't, couldn't agree more. There's, oh, thank you, Rebecca. There's some really good comments coming in too about the social stigma of dining alone, traveling alone. There have been some stories that have been shared about women who are traveling to a place on their own and have been approached by people being like, are you all right? Like, is there somebody with you? Are you, you know, like, what do you do? Have any of you gotten that question before? What do you do about it? All the time. I, I have explained my marital status to conductors on trains, <laughs> the waiters and restaurants. I mean, like you name it, everyone feels entitled to ask me what is going on, but why are you single? That's so beautiful woman. What happened? <laughs> and, so, and I have to say, I'll be like, I, well, it hasn't happened for me yet. Um, sir, I don't know why, sir, I don't, I don't know why we could get into this if you'd like to discuss it. Um, but I just would really like to get to my destination. Uh, and so I, I've just found that it, it, it is asked a lot. I know some people wear a fake engagement ring or something like that. Um, I try to just laugh it off, keep it going. You know, I don't necessarily want to make up a whole elaborate lie and have to construct and keep up with all of that. Um, but it is very common and it is asked so boldly because people all assume that something must be wrong with you if you're traveling the world solo if you're in this romantic place solo you know all these amazing beautiful places that I've been to you get looked at strangely uh thankfully as a travel writer I have that to lean back on and I'm a travel writer like I'm working like leave me alone uh, <laughs> so I have a reason to be here um but even before then and even before that was the case I still um um, you know, I think everybody would be saying about the stigma of being by yourself. I had to kind of confront that and go head first into being alone in situations. It was like diving into a pool, right? Like you're not going to be able to like really do well if it's just like cold and you're trying to acclimate. Like you just got to kind of just cannonball in there. Uh, and so that's what I did. And I would go by myself to places and I would meet other people. And that's how I realized that, you know, when you travel solo, you're never really alone because you don't live in a world that is by you know yourself. You have people everywhere. And when you're alone, if you have that energy, if you're approachable, if you're you know wanting to learn more about people, you usually get invited places. You usually get kind of absorbed into other people's groups. Everybody, like I said, wants to help you. Um, so it can be a really interesting experience and it doesn't have to be scary once you dive on like full on in. I, I think those are great points. And I also want to highlight some of the things that are coming in through the comments as well about this, how, you know, some people are like, this has been, I have been getting this question my whole life. Now I'm in my fifties and I'm still getting this question. And, but one thing I did want to call out and Stacey, Ann, thank you so much for saying this, because I think that this is important too. Um, in reference to us talking about the imposter syndrome that we have, the fact that we're not applying for these jobs, there is also, I think, work that we need to do to make sure that we are recognizing the biases that we have ourselves, you know, that maybe we are also looking at applications from women and going, oh, she's not, you know, eh, I don't know, I actually think that she's not qualified enough for this, you know, or because we have been socialized in that same world, right? And I, I admit, like, I have seen other women dining alone and I've been like, oh, I wonder what happened to her. You know, like, and then I'm like, oh my God, why did you just think that? Dears? Like, why did you? Uh? And, but it's like, so we have this work to do ourselves too. It's not just like, you know, everyone else to us. I mean, do you all think about that? Like what, what have you noticed about yourself in terms of the work that you need to do to further that equity in travel or in life? Either of you want to take that? <laughs> That's a really good point because yeah, I, I I I do see where you're coming from. Like we also have those biases ourselves, and and um, you know, being Nigerian, like I grew up in a very patriarchal society 
where men take charge, women are supposed to be subservient. So I feel like for the first, like maybe like 20 years of my life, I definitely kind of thought that men did certain tasks better, right? Like if you're hiring someone, you should hire a man, right? So I did have those biases and and it was, um, it wasn't until like the last 10 years that I've really been on this personal development journey and recognized like all those ideas and, and beliefs and, um, and really confronted them. Like, you know, why can't a woman do this job just as well as a man? Why can't I travel solo? Why can't I, you know, run a company? Right. So I, I definitely agree with you, Beth, that it's, 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 so it's a work, it's work that we all have to do women and men and society as a whole, because there we have, yeah, like someone mentioned, we have unconscious biases. Um, we have l- beliefs about what women are capable of and what women can't do. Uh, we have beliefs about what men are better at versus what women are, are good for, right? So um, I definitely I definitely agree with you. And I, I think um, that the first step is always awareness, just bringing it to our own awareness that we have these biases. And that's why these conversations are so amazing because it, it gets us thinking about these issues in ways that we've never thought before. And mm-hmm. that's like the first step to change. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think that that's, that is, in my opinion, why days like this exist. It's not just, you know, hey, let's talk about women. And then like, let's forget about women after that. It, and and I hope that this is what happens from here on out on International Women's Day. I hope that yes, we get flowers because I love to get flowers, but also like, can we just put a pin in this every year and remind ourselves, like, let's all set an auto reminder that every year on March, March 8th, think, take some time to really think about, am I doing enough? You know, am I doing enough? Are the people around me doing enough? If yes, great. Although I don't know if there's ever going to be a yes in the immediate future, but if no, you know, what can we be doing? You don't have to do it all today. That's not what it's about. It's kind of just about like making a plan for the rest of the year, you know, like, okay, let's use this day to say, what are the things that I can be doing now to further women's equity in my industry, in my home, in my neighborhood, in my business, you know, whatever it is, what's the work that I need to be doing myself? Let me take a minute to examine my own self and then let me also advocate. And I think that that is part of what happens when we do shout outs of like, you know, inspiring women and we are doing work to highlight and amplify those voices, but also like there's more that can be done year round. And like, let's use this as let's like make it a planning day, you know, like how, okay, great. We're talking about women today. Great. Now what am I going to do on March 9th and March 10th and March 11th? Yeah, Nicole, every day is women's day, right? That's how it should be. And so, um, But yeah, I mean, if you could do that, like what, for people who are watching, I know we have a lot of, uh, a lot of like the choir that we're preaching to in this, in this audience, so many women who understand and deeply feel what we're talking about, but it's not that way everywhere. Thank you. This person who says, you know, they're, they're talking about where they live, not feeling like they've advanced a whole lot for women. What should we be sharing with our allies? If you could use this time to share a message to them about what they could be doing, what they should be doing, how they can be improving their work for women locally or worldwide, what are some of the pieces of advice that you give our allies? I think for me, it starts with really sharing our experiences with them and how we move through the world. Because I think like, like you mentioned earlier, Jen, you know, a lot of times if you are that person that can take up that space and spread themselves on the on the metro, you might not even realize how it is to move through the world as as a woman, you know, and 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 the experiences that we go to and, and the harassment that we all experience from one time to another on the street, for example, catcalling, all kinds of stuff. Somebody was saying, you know, after 50, it doesn't stop, you know, all those things. And it's having those frank conversations and saying, hey, this is how it is for me. Imagine moving through the world in this body, what that looks like. I think that's a it's a great way to raise that awareness for, for our allies to, to be a bit more empathetic. Um, and I, I also just want to say real quick that uh, 
and and I think it says more about my to do list right now and my mental space right now than anything else. But Beth, Beth when we, when you were saying about let's plan, let's action, let's this, and I'm just like, no, <laughs> let's, you rest. let's rest, let's <laughs> rest. <laughs> It's a, but you you're know, right. it's a celebration. Yeah. Let's rest. <laughs> you're like, I'm like that kid in the class who's like, oh, teacher, you forgot homework. And everyone's like, oh, God damn it. Like, <laughs> I just want to have one day to relax. <laughs> good point. Good point. March 8th is our day. March 9th, we'll start, we'll start getting the work done. How about that? Yeah. Some that of you are good. in Australia, so it's already March 9th. So you guys start working <laughs> and the rest of us rest the rest of the day. <laughs> Dan Sancho, what should, what would you what do you tell our allies? I think just the, the main thing would just be to listen, right? Because I feel like women have already been voicing um our, our stories and our experiences. And it's just a matter of getting the point through and having people like listen to us and acknowledge um, you know, our perspectives and like what we need to feel safe in this world and to navigate different places and to, I mean, show up and, and contribute as well as we can. So I think it's just, I think that that's the main thing. Cause I feel like we, we are already having these conversations. We are already um, making it clear, you know, about our, our experiences. It's just about our people listening. Mm, that's a really great point. Jen? Yeah, I think it can be hard because uh, we feel maybe like there's not a lot of reason to celebrate with so many rights being taken away and things like that. Uh, and I think that that's where traveling helps because as much as we're seeing, you know, two, one step forward, two steps back kind of thing, uh, when we travel, it's, it's that interaction that's pushing progress. It's, you know, at least something that I've noticed, it's the places that are most isolated, where there can be control over people, where you can have these kind of antiquated rules, where women can be really stifled, as opposed to places that have open discourse and ideas and things of the sort. And so as much as it seems dire right now, we still have so many gifts the gift of being able to learn and openly talk and discuss with each other, you know, from mostly all around the world and, and get to absorb all of our different viewpoints. Like that's incredible. And that's what keeps us growing as individuals. We still have the gift of travel. If you're somebody who's able to travel freely, you know, who's able to just put, pick up a passport and book a ticket for a day after tomorrow and take off. Like that's a privilege I never take for granted. I was born in Puerto Rico. And so I was born a U.S citizen and it doesn't escape me that if i had been born 100 miles in either direction traveling around the world would be much more challenging for me and so i feel like i travel because i can right because it's a privilege that i have that other people don't i learn because I can, because women have fought for so long to have the opportunity to learn whatever it is they're interested in versus having information and, and knowledge, you know, uh, retained from them. And so I feel like it's my obligation to live this life fully as this empowered, free woman uh, that I think so many of us are and take for granted or re don't really realize how amazing our lives are that at this moment in time, for the first time ever in history, like you can be a female travel writer that never existed before because females never traveled anywhere. You're supposed to be at home and filling your gender roles, right? And you're so you can be this amazing businesswoman and you can be somebody that goes and meets other small business owners and female entrepreneurs around the world and champions them and makes a difference with your projects like so many of the women in this community do, right? There's so many women in this community that are uplifting other women locally and it's really part of a broader movement. So as much as these win, these, these like battles, right, uh, can seem really disheartening and like we've lost a lot of things along the way. We, I really do think that we're winning the war long term and that we are in such a wonderful place now that we've never been at before, that we as women are just lucky to be alive right now and have the opportunity now to really follow our dreams and, and make an impact. I think you're absolutely right. And it's it's an exciting time. And I know we're getting close to the end. So I have to say, I'm excited because the four of us get to be together again 
in like two months. It's going to be awesome. We're all definitely <laughs> hosting us. We'll all go to her place. We'll like, yes. you know, <laughs> throw flowers and margaritas in there. And we'll be at WITS. So I mentioned it earlier, the WITS Travel Creators Summit. We've got hundreds of content creators coming in. What are you all taught? Each of you is speaking. What are all your sessions? Jen, you first, then Santo, then Yulia. Well, first I'm hosting the beginner boot camp. So if it's your first time, get ready. Uh, and, and then also I'm going to do a workshop on TikTok so you can get some videos by the time we are done, ready to post. Super awesome. I'm hosting an intermediate session on writing a blog content that generates massive sales. So if you're like a, an intermediate blogger or maybe even advanced, this is perfect for you. I'm going to be diving deep into some like frameworks and it's going to be so awesome. <laughs> Love it. Yulia? Cool. Um, I'm hosting a, a full day pre-conference workshop that's going to take you from beginning to end of creating an assignment. So if you're interested in travel journalism, travel writing, travel photography, then that's the workshop to be in uh, Thursday before the conference. It's going to be so fun. I can't wait. I know there's, um, I think there was a code that launched today. You all have to look. I think it's called Women's Day all caps. Actually, I'll put it in there just in case any of you are interested, though. This wasn't meant to be a pitch. Women's Day is the code that we have at witsummit.com. And um, and that'll get you, I think it's like $100 off your ticket. So come on and join us. But I want to give you all, before we leave, a minute because you are, and, and I think it's worth underlining, we're talking about the work that we need to do. Oh, yay, Melinda's coming to her first bits ever. The work that we need to do, the work that our allies need to do, but I also want to take a minute to recognize that three of you are already doing a lot of work in this space, which is also why, Yulia, maybe we don't want to put the pressure on you to build out the plan for the rest of the year because you all really are. And here's that you, each of you, and I think that's something I really admire about each of you is that you're not just doing one thing. Like each of you has like six or seven businesses that you're running at the same time. And and it's because I see that passion and the way you talk about travel and the way you talk about creating. And I want to give you a minute to just share some of the things that you're working on, some of the things that you're really excited about, anything that you want our audience to know about. This is your chance. And we'll also make sure we follow up in an email with information on that, too. So let's do the same order again, if that works. Jen, Santo, Yulia. Jen, what have you got going on in your world these days? Sure. Well, first off, Beth, like, look who's talking, Miss. I just am. I literally run all these businesses and own a brick and mortar cafe and I'm all on these boards and, you know, everything. <laughs> um, so, with all of the rest of us just trying to keep up, um, I have my website, Jen on a Jet Plane. And this year I've been doing some live trainings. So, we are halfway through a live training on becoming a travel writer. Um, I'm actually a three time North American travel. Journalist Association Award winner because I just won bronze in an article last week. I'm very excited. Um, it's, always, it's great to get recognized. You know, awards on everything, but it, it's always really nice, especially in a traditional atmosphere. So I'm running that training now, and I'm going to have other live trainings on things like how to land a TEDx talk, how to self-publish, you know, TikTok. Uh, and so that's going to be going all year long. So if you're on my email list, you'll get those updates. And then I also have my memoir, 12 Trips in 12 Months. It's it's my first traditionally published book. I've self-published five books um, and they helped me get to that point, right? The success of those books helped me sell my book proposal uh, to a publishing company and next summer it's coming out. So some exciting things happening this year, including the book cover launch and things of the sort in the fall. So I'm really excited. I, I really want it to go well. I haven't had a big like adult party. So the way that I am planning this launch party, like you guys don't even know, like I have clippings, like if it was a wedding almost, I have clippings of like what I want the cake to look like and what are going to be the souvenirs for people or like the little party bags. Oh, like, fun. <laughs> That is so exciting. I cannot wait for all of it. I know it's like the last, you know, getting everything ready and, and congrats on the number three. That's so awesome. Thank you. Congratulations, Jen. I can't wait. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, going on. Yeah. For me, um, I have a lot of content coming up on my travel blog, semtoseeks.com. I'm writing like 500 posts this year, so I'm really excited for that. Yeah, it's, it's really ambitious. Um, I also launched a bundle for beginner bloggers. It's called the Blog Starter Bundle. If you're interested, <laughs> send me a message at, some, at my Instagram handle, at semtoseeks. It's like breaks down like my entire five-step blog blogging process that I've been teaching for like five years now. Um, I'm hosting my first group trip ever to Costa Rica in November and I'm so excited. I'm taking a group of women. It's a, it's a small group and um, we're traveling to um, San Jose, Arenal, seeing the volcano. We're going sailing in Guanacaste and like going to a coffee farm. So I'm super excited to host like a group of women on this very first trip. Um, and so if you're interested, send me a message as well and they have a, a discount for International Women's Day. And let's see what else. Um, I, I hosted an event last month with Wonderful about how to start a travel blog that makes money. And on, on March 10th, I'm posting a Q&A with Wonderful, kind of a follow up with that. So if you're starting a travel blog and you want to learn more about, you know, if you're on the, on the right track, you can come join us. It's completely free. And uh, we're also going to send out the information about that um, via the email. Amazing. Love Just, it. Yeah. I, yeah. I think everybody gets like a little round of applause after there. This is amazing. <laughs> I want to go to Costa Rica. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> join us. If available, we're coming with you. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Julia, how about yourself? Um, well, so what I'm working on is my uh, travel media lab platform. And on that platform, we uh, host a podcast. So we have lots of conversations like this with amazing women in travel. So uh, definitely check it out. We've interviewed uh, editors of top publications over the years, journalists, photographers, writers. Um, and it's a really great resource. Um, I'm also excited to be in Puerto Rico very soon with you guys and, and lead that workshop. Um, and I'm also doing a workshop later in the year, I think in the fall in Georgia, the country, not the state, uh, a workshop on storytelling with a fellow travel writer. Uh, so that will be exciting as well. And you guys can follow along if you sign up for the newsletter at travelmedialab.com. And uh, finally, I'm also mentoring individually because some people really thrive in group settings, um, which we do in uh, uh, through Travel Media Lab. But I'm also doing individual mentorship programs, which are doing very well. I'm mentoring five people right now, so I'm not busy at all. Uh, but for the next round, we will be starting, I think, in May. So just keep an eye out on Instagram and through the uh, email list. We'll be announcing that soon as well. So many great things coming. What a, I mean, to your point, Jen, there's so much good stuff happening in the world. And this is just out of the three of you all. And if I can contribute my one little thing that I want to add to all of this, because today is the day that my podcast launched and I wanted to just share that. Oh, thanks everybody. I just, I just like shared a little screen share so you can see this is my website. The, the link to it is 85percentpodcast.com. I hope you all go and listen. It is a really cool podcast where we're talking about how 85% of travel decisions are made by women. Yet, why are we not in 85% of travel marketing? So we're interviewing change makers, trailblazers, women who are leading the industry, women who work in the industry. It's my first foray into podcasting. So I beg for everybody's grace and kindness because all the <laughs> experienced podcasters here are going to shame me. But um I am so excited to be launching it. I hope you all check it out. We will follow up with an email with all of the things that we have going out that you can learn more about. And I hope that we can continue these conversations at our dinner tables, with our friend groups, in events, you know, that it's not something that just comes up on March 8th, but is part of the everyday dialogue of how we can make sure that travel is more equitable, that it's more responsible, that's more inclusive, that we're talking to truly all of us, to a diversity of women, not just one subset of women, that we're talking about how we can make this industry better for every player in it. And the work that all three of you are doing is contributing so greatly to that. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having us. It was amazing. And I, I just... I'm so glad we're having this conversation and I'm just so glad that everyone sh showed up. Like it's, it's been incredible. Thank you so much, Beth. <laughs>
Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. To those in Australia, have a great rest of your long day. Everybody else, rest. Put your feet up. Go to bed. Listen to me, whatever you want to listen to tonight. Watch some Netflix. And we'll see you all on March 9th. Thanks for being here. Bye for now, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.